All right, the final thing we need to do is have a function so that you can actually check your answer and verify if the answer is correct. So um, let's look at the check answer function. The first thing that we're going to do is use a variable called answer. Um, this doesn't need to be a global variable, so therefore I didn't declare it up at the top because it's only used within this function. So the variable answer, um, that's going to be set to the document get element by ID English input. So remember English input is what I've named the text input box. So it will get the value of that. Now something that you haven't used before, this is new, we add on a special JavaScript function called to lowercase. What that does is it allows you to take the input and no matter if the person typed it in all caps, all smalls, a mixture of caps and smalls, it, it just takes that, it changes it all to lowercase, and that way you can e more easily compare the answer. So if you noticed, when I set up the English colors, they're in all lowercase. Um, because to the computer, remember that orange with a capital O is different from orange with a small O, and if somebody randomly just, you know, tried to type their answer in um, or and I have a hard time typing that word if they typed in their answer in all caps or if I typed it in all caps they would have to know to type it in all caps um, and that is different from if somebody used um, you know different case for each word so each letter of the word so it's best if we just take out that issue of having to double check everything um, or having a whole myriad of possibilities of if statements for how people could put that in and we just use the JavaScript function that says take whatever they've put in, make it all lowercase, and then we're, all, we're just comparing lowercase to lowercase. So that's really important. Then we want to check their answer. So we say if their answer equals, double equals, the English colors, um, look in the English colors array and look at that slot for whatever random color came up. So for example, if the number that came up was two, it's going to, the question should come up zero, one, two and ask for what is Azul, and then it will be comparing 0, 1, 2, it'll be comparing to see if their answer is blue because that is in the slot number 2. So then um, if that is correct, what do we want to do? Increase their score, so that's the shortcut, score plus plus. We want to set the inner HTML of that output um, div to the, uh, their answer plus the just string is correct. Um, this is how I've changed the background color. So I've said document, look at the body, get its style um, attribute, and then the background color and change that to answer. So if the answer was blue, it will change the background color to blue. I could have done this as well by setting up um, some different styles in the style sheet, but this seemed more straightforward to do instead of having a whole bunch of different styles. Um, then the other thing in a similar way, I got the output um, div, found that, document get element by ID, change the style attribute and change its color, and remember color is the text color and I also changed that to answer. So that's how when we're playing and it comes up, oh, white isn't a good example. Well, you can't see the background change, but we'll see that text change. 
and then we can just do one more test red so it changes this and that so that's what that part of the function does else so that's meaning if you don't have the right answer so it will change that output to say answer is not correct and we don't give them any points um, in either case so this is outside the if else we want to update that current score the inner html of that div and for it to say current score plus their actual score and here's how we um, call the ask question thing. So this is sort of acting as a loop. So we use the built-in set timeout function. It will call the ask question function. And I've set the timeout to be um, 2,000 milliseconds or two seconds. So every two seconds or after two seconds, it will ask the next question. So that will cause it to come back up here. It will determine if the game counter has reached 10. If it has, it will do all of this. Else, it will first pick another random number. Then it will check to see if that random number has been asked. And if it has, it will go up and start the function again. Otherwise, it will update the inner HTML. It will set that particular value to yes um, in the asked array, and it will increment the game counter. So this should be the last part that you need to make this work. Go ahead and test that out. And now you have an example uh, for making a random quiz. We've used all the elements that you would need to in order to um, meet the requirements for your level one internal.